Hello everybody, we are live. Welcome back to yet another episode of the Nerditude Movie Podcast. Here we are again on another Friday evening. And if you're not an alcoholic, I hope you're watching us. Anyways, we're reviewing two movies tonight, as always. However, there will be lots of ADD conversation as well as other joyous things to talk about. Because frankly, these movies suck dick. Now, Alex has a difference of an opinion on one of them. I'm assuming, he, just judging by the text messages, he hated the movie much as I did. Lewis, I feel like you're, you're going Giovanni on us here. And, like, <laughs> your camera angle is an Art Deco movie where it's just, like, me in a blue I'm just, room. Yeah, I'm just slowly, like, yeah. hey, guys, is this like... <laughs> Lewis will be here until he sinks into the foundation of his home entirely. <laughs> <laughs> you're good there, I think. Spot. I mean, if you're okay with people thinking that you're a dwarf, I think we're fine. <laughs> maybe if the the maybe other dwarfs will see you on YouTube and think, my gosh, if he can do it, and then there's a show for I, us. And you stand I that or people fraud. think like I'm being held hostage because I'm like in a I'm in the <laughs> right. fucking corner. You're in the could, gulag. Can I take a pee, please? <laughs> Um, <laughs> we are back, and we're doing two movies, Hypnotic and Fast X. Hypnotic starring Ben Affleck, directed by Robert Rodriguez, and Fast X, the 300th movie in the Fast and the Furious storyline, just keeps going. Paul Walker is still nowhere to be seen. I understand he's dead, but it's illogical for you to storm his I house. I thought they were going to bring him back somehow. I mean, what, they brought what, everybody else yeah, back. Wouldn't it made sense to have his brother do the role <laughs> and put his face on his brother? Because, like... It made no sense that she's in the home by like in with the kid by herself, and then it's like smoking it. Like how the like what? It it it, it didn't make sense. Like Mia's always oh. there, but the kids aren't there, and neither is Brian. Yeah. And then when like the one on. the one agent got knocked out, I was like, are they gonna? Is that supposed to be Brian home? Because uh, the way she smiled, yeah. Right, like he like okay. We should we should save fast X. Yeah, for the, that'll be for the, the last piece de l'histoire. I have a lot to say about that, but I before we, I feel like the movies for this week we were scraping the bottom of the no, barrel. No, we did it on purpose because you guys recommend somebody recommended Hypnotic, and I said the movie looks like shit, and then you guys were like, "Oh, let's fucking try it." And I'm like, "All right, you did." You asked. I you said, asked for recommendation of new. That okay, but then I and I but I did say that movie looks like shit, and I'd rather not. But if you would wanted to, I would do it. And then you were like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "All right, then we're all in." And that's why I was like, we're going a two for Tuesday here, and Fast X is on the fucking list, because if we're going to watch that bullshit we had to watch, we're also watching Fast X to get it out of the fucking way, so I could forget the franchise exists once again. I got to see half of Fast Five while I watched Fast X. That was kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was weird. I hey, guess what? Pivotal it... plot point. Flashback! Hypnotic. Did it go to theaters or was it like? I believe streams? so, but it was like a two week release because nobody gave a shit. Uh, yeah. okay. Beyond that, that what have you ladies and fellas been watching? Before we um, get into these Mavis. I I I I've been looking for something new to start because we get into this like comfort area of just like Come. just watch the same shows. Um and yeah. I heard We're currently watching bunch... The Office again, I understand that. We we just finished the wedding episode. Uh, um, we're close. We're a season away, I think. Um, I had been looking for a new show to watch, um, and I had heard stuff about Succession before it ended. Um, and there's a couple people I know that kept telling me, like, oh, it's kind of like Game of Thrones, which I never understood the reference. But now that I started it, um, it kind of is, because... It's, like a modernized version of Game of Thrones? I mean, essentially, the family is like a monarchy of just the grossest, scummiest, like, depraved, garbage human beings. And you just... So a monarchy! Yeah, you, you just can't not watch it. And it's by... It's directed and written by Adam McKay, um, which, ironically, he's done a lot of, like, Will Ferrell Yeah, the other guys, the, all that sort of shit, yeah. But I, one of my favorite movies he's done. Um, oh, good night. It's uh, no, it's uh, it's called Don't Look Up. It's on oh, Netflix. Yeah, yeah um, DiCaprio, right? 
yeah the the writing in it is just like it's it's very witty it's like quick pace it's like very dark humor um and that succession is basically that and it's it's a weird show because like it's a comedy drama and like you're laughing and then like there's these quiet moments where you're like oh uh he just ruined this dude's family like it's it's like it's funny and then it stops and it's like this is actually it's kind yeah. of messed up like that show up. that show is on our list to watch we are finishing peaky blinders and then we're gonna move to yellowstone and then i think we're gonna do mad men and then go from there because she's wanted been wanting to watch mad men for a while but i really want to fucking watch yellowstone i uh Here started too. i started watching king of tulsa i actually watched the entire first season i highly recommend that show um where's where's that on that's paramount plus it's oh, okay. stallone is a uh, new york mobster who gets sent to prison for 25 years that was a double negative you're a double negative what's up fabian <laughs> and um he's in prison for 25 years gets out and they basically tell him there's no room for you here you're gonna go to oklahoma set up shop and you'll kick us five grand a week and keep the rest and it's it's just kind of uh yeah it's you know the trailers make it seem like it's really dumb and goofy it's actually really well written it reminds me a lot of sons of anarchy which makes sense because and because the creator of yellowstone taylor sheridan also i guess created this show and he like produces it but there's a lot of shit in there that i didn't expect is i thought it was just going to be kind of a dumb comedy and there are those moments i do say stallone's a good actor I blew through all nine episodes, and I, I hope they do a second season. I really enjoyed it. Other than that, running through the office, um, trying to, you know, I, we got the new puppy, so I've been spending more time in the living room. Like, the new Yakuza game came out, and it's a Game Pass game, so I installed that shit on my Xbox, too, so I got it in the living room. Because those things, it's a, it's a fucking Japanese soap opera. I saw there was a, a well-known YouTuber who did the english dub for one of the characters in that yakuza and it's i was doing my own english dub. very bad it was very bad <laughs> i did all the translations for everybody because there is no english uh, language track in the audio i was giving them the gist of it according to the subtitles at least they uh they were using that as as like a selling point on aew storyline what's that for for kenny omega the yakuza why I, I, because I, kenny omega's big into the game oh and well what's really cool is it's a sequel to the last one, the one I played that had the turn-based combat that I really liked, and I like blew through it. It is like a sequel, but it's also in the same time frame. So like when shit's going on in this one, it's paralleling the time of like the other game, and at some point, I'm sure it's going to intersect. So I like the franchise. I know Kenny Omega's a, a fucking huge nerd. Yeah, he's like a huge like Japanese gamer guy too. Kind of off topic, but since you mentioned wrestling, um. My YouTube algorithm is full of blippy and weird stuff, and because I got a kid, um, but I I fell down the rabbit hole of watching these. Uh, try it's a YouTube page uh, that has a playlist called "Try Not to Wince Challenge," and it's all like uh, like back like backdoor wrestling and like the extreme wrestling, and it's just like botched moves and stuff that goes wrong. And it's funny because, like, I love horror. I can watch the goriest stuff ever. I can watch clips on Reddit. But for some reason, like, wrestling fails where they get hurt. Like, that's the horror. Or where, they're, where their knees watch. bend backwards. Well, I, here's, just, I can't. Here's the thing. Say what you want about professional wrestling. It's much like fireworks. Like, even if you know what you're doing with them, you could still get hurt. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Even dudes that are indie that only have that have training, shit goes wrong. You're looking at momentum. You're look. I mean, especially when you're talking about like the hardcore matches, and it's like some dude they're in a gymnasium and some dude jumps off the top standing thing and misses the table completely and bounces off the fucking basketball floor. I've seen that too. And then you've got that uh, poor mentally ill dude who just screams out "fuck this shit" ICP and jumps on microwaves and shit. There's that poor kid. He, the the two dudes who did um, talk to me, um, they're doing a, a documentary for A24 that follows, like, the history and documents some uh, amateur, like, extreme wrestlers. Um, but yeah, man, that that, that stuff, like, that's, injuries, though. I think that's wrestling, isn't it? Wrestlers for Netflix? 
I started no, no, watching no. that, but I fell asleep they're, during. They're it. doing the, these guys are making a, a new documentary that's oh. not out yet. It's oh, Lewis, I got. But I think I think a twenty four. I think a twenty four is for wrestlers. I think they did that. Chucky's going to be the next killer in Dead by Daylight. How's that going to work though? <laughs> How do they not just stomp him? You did. Doesn't, doesn't the killer also pick up? Yeah. The person, like. Yeah, I don't know. Not sure. I'm surprised. Um, I'm I'm surprised that game's still going. It's got a it's big fan base free still. To play. Yeah. It's free to play, except if you want anything, any at all in the game. Anything different. You, you gotta buy it. Yeah. You can earn it if you put six thousand hours into it, but you know. Yeah. Okay. Ten bucks is easier. Jen I, wants me I, to buy the Lightning McQueen car in Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I blew through one piece and uh, I actually liked that a lot. Um and then what I was watched the other all guy's the, name. All the Fast and Furious, I, I caught up from <laughs> five to ten. I don't know why you watched just, all those. Dude. Just, just, just to elaborate though, Alex is referring to the uh, live action adaptation and not the over thousand episodes of the anime. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a pretty good distinction to make. He's not an incel. Dude, One Piece was good. I, it's the wackiest. You guys ever. keep I saying just, that, I but it. I just the problem is I genuinely have zero, maybe even <laughs> negative interest in it. I I I say it as someone who doesn't like anime. I don't either. I wish I did because there's a lot of stuff that like looks cool, but then I watch anime for like four minutes and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck this. It's... I can hear you guys. <laughs> can you hear me? Now I can see you. Well, you yeah. look like a potato, but I can see you. Anyway. Like, but both of you in unison, because the crazy thing is, like, the whole time we were live, like, everything on my end is 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 just fine. <laughs> I didn't even have a goddamn blip, but you guys can hear and see me? Yeah, all we can see is, like, that. you were in the middle of a sentence. No, like... as, as in right now, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, now, yeah, now. That's now, what I care about. <laughs> yeah, what one piece I don't want to compare it to like James Gunn, but like the the manga the and stream the live lagged adaptation, hard guy, yeah. They just they have their own style. Like there's nothing like it. It's just it's weird. It's a good show. I you know, I don't know, man. I from I don't know. I could ch I I'll check out some YouTube clips and go from there, but that really is one of those things where like I have no interest in. So I'd be forcing myself to watch it just to give it a shot. Alex, what else have you been watching? Just the, you're such a big fan of Fast and the Furious that uh, that's, oh that's god, it. yeah, yeah, I was a big fan, super of it fan week. over here. But yeah, just that. That's it. That's how I spent my days. All right, let's get into this fucking shit show of a review today. We got back to back stinkers. At least two of us think that Hypnotic is a stinker. I think it sounds like an alcoholic beverage gone wrong. Alex, let's is start with you. Yeah, hyp Hypnotic is that blue, oh, it's yeah, the yeah. blue shit. Uh, Alex, let's let, have you start with, let's give it some positives and why, because you off, off stream had said you did enjoy it. So why did you like it? Well, it was just entertaining. Um, I, I could see myself if I was to actually wait for my wife to watch it. I think she would really get into it because, you know, she's, she's like, just like, just those women, but, uh, am I right? But uh, it, it was, it had a couple of like a little twist in there that it was kind of like, oh, that's cool. That's, you know. But it, it, it's still a bad movie. I'm not saying that it was the phenomenal. I just said I liked it. I, it's not. It's not that I hated the fucking movie. But I'm. There's nothing I can tell you to sell you sell you on it to change your mind. No, I didn't. I don't <laughs> want to be sold on. I just want to genuinely know what you did like about it. Now I will say I thought it was fucking stupid beyond all belief. Um, I, there is no Robert Rodriguez flavor in this movie at all either. Like think back to like Dust Till Dawn. Uh, even Planet El Mariachi. Terror, El Mariachi, like Once Upon a Time in Mexico, like all that shit had a certain flair. Desperado, obviously, all had that like Robert Rodriguez eye. And this movie is very cookie cutter feeling. Like there's nothing unique about it. Uh, it to me, it feels largely like an Inception ripoff. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, and like not done in any way that's any like makes any logical sense because basically like. If you want to point out anything that's a fallacy in it, they could just be like, well, none of it was ever real. Don't you get it? It was all the hypnotics poisoning their minds, bro. And it's like, well, that's a stupid device to fall back on in any fucking movie where if I say this doesn't make any goddamn sense, you're like, because it wasn't real. <laughs> uh, which is the only argument I think you can take on this movie. By the way, this is probably one of Ben Affleck's worst performances in any fucking movie I've seen him in. Like... 
Half the movie, he acts like he had dental work and can't open his jaw to talk. This this might have been filmed during those times when they got that picture of him standing outside with the cigarette. Well, no, I no, I, I, no, no. I think I it was. I think picture. it was later because he's thinner in this movie. That was like Batman no. era, where he's like he had to be at the gym at six thirty in the morning, and he's tired, and he's got to pick up his kid from school. So outside school, he's just fucking puffing. No, like that's the thing though. Is like remember, like the scene in the. Uh, in the prison where his his partner turns on him and he's like at, around the corner and he's like max max it's me <laughs> like why why was he so stone jawed the whole fucking movie and then literally the last act of the movie he looks like he's got like max pain face the <laughs> you can't get rid of that smile right he's he, he's got a bad problem with emotion, like showing Dude, it in his face. Like, he was fucking terrible in this movie. Like, all of the actors are better than him in this fucking movie. What's After his playing face? Batman. Blonde guy who's been, in, who's been in 16 war movies and is an awesome actor. I can't remember. It's William something, I think. Um, the, the main hypnotic guy who... By the way, there's twists and turns, everybody. Let's not spoil it for you. you William believe, Fitchner. William Fitchner, yes. That that poor guy was in this fuckfest of a movie. But I'll say this. If you got Peacock and you want an excuse to watch, I'm, I'm not going to spoil the twist for you. Just Jackie know. Jackie Haley was in this, too. Ja- yeah, what a waste of fucking acting in there, too. two and a half it's minutes. Annoying. And they're not even twists. Like, the main twist of the movie is revealed in such a non like anticlimactic way where like there's a scene and then it's just like by the way this is what's going on i just laid it completely out on the table and it's like but but <laughs> all right that's it right like there's no more mystery and then like there is no more mystery that's the problem is like as soon as the twist is happens you're like this should be like something that happens in the last 10 minutes, right? But no, they got the whole kidnapped daughter looking for her angle. And then that comes and it turns into a fucking X-Men Jean Grey movie. It's just, fuck, dude. When when I saw a picture of the family at, at the beginning, I was like, I was like, what is this? Is this like a bad casting? Did they just fucking do this on purpose? They just, that's that's a picture of, uh, you know, <laughs> random person blonde with a, with a Spanish kid and Ben Affleck like what the fuck yeah yeah dude none of it and then like they try to build a mystery of it like then for one, back once again he's terrible at his acting in this where he's just like you know how can I be able to do that and she's like I don't know but you did it he's like yeah I know but I need answers and it's like you just used magic basically you fucking moron like what answers do you think you're gonna get like, it, it reminded other... me of the cheesiness of Dark City, but without any of the charm. Like, with the my, tuning. My, my other issue was the, um, the, like, background, like, almost Inception-like effect they kept using. Yeah. Looked like someone did it last minute <laughs> like yeah, it, it, they laid they laid under the, the the chicago bean and they were fucking rolling like videos yeah, and just it, recording like that it was awful dude the cg in this movie in general is no good like and then the whole idea of like oh the you know it's nothing's real the there's literally a building flying in front of them like it's fucking twister she's like just keep driving like i'd be like into the building like and that's the other thing is if none of it was real, right? What is it? I, I, like, okay, I don't want to spoil the twist, like but it's so f- yeah. Like, there's no point in this whole fucking movie. So this came out in May, and it made two two point four million. Dude, he probably got paid more than for, Robert Rodriguez yeah. got paid more than that for this. The movie. budget was seventy million. Yeah. Oh, mm. awful. This is bad on the same level as Ben Affleck in Paycheck. <laughs> Sorry, in, in Ben, total- you've had some stinkers. In total, gross worldwide, it made fifteen million. Like for every one Armageddon, Ben Affleck has six Geelys. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, they can make a sequel now. That's yeah. true. He is tapping that port. I think they're married now, actually. Right? Why yeah. do I fucking care? I hope they all go in the same helicopter and do a fucking crash. Kobe. I don't fuck you here, right here. Kobe. <laughs> boom. I don't give a fuck about celebrities anymore, dude. Uh... This, oh, did you guys hear? The, by the way, we probably should say it. The strike is over, everybody. Ha, the ha, strike ha, is ha, over. Ha, yeah, ha, my, ha. my feed's got fucking flooded with so many celebrities promoting shit now. Here's the thing. No, best, I can officially say it. Best thing that's coming out of uh, the strike is it's confirmed the only Marvel product coming out next year is uh, Deadpool 
three, which means we can get a fucking break from their garbage. The Ugh. problem, though, is there are going to be projects that are pushed out. Oh, there's no more. content next year. I hope you got. I hope you got a fun YouTuber you like. And then there are also going to be projects that are just extremely rushed and are shit because they're going to be like, we got to fill the year. Here's my suggestion, everybody, and I'm I'm considering doing this myself. Right? There's going to be a gonna be there's going to be a lull next year in TV and movie. Cancel your subscriptions. You've been pissed off that Netflix is raising their prices. Cancel your fucking Netflix. Because they ain't going to have shit to watch anyways. Keep one, maybe two of them. Because if you keep Hulu and fucking Peacock, you've got every TV show, or, or, or Max for that matter. You've got every TV show and movie you could theoretically want. Either that, go to iTunes or Vudu and fucking buy the movies, you cheap fucks. Like, that's the thing, like... People bitch all the time about the prices. Now, next year will be the time to fucking cancel. Because there's not going to be anything worth having a subscription to anything. That's and honestly how I feel. Like, I'd rather, at this point, I'd rather just, like, I'll just buy it on Vudu. Here's the thing. If you're not going to buy it, get Hulu, right? Like, Hulu, yes, because of Disney has raised their prices. But if you look at Hulu's log of, like... Movies throughout their TV shows and they're, they're the breadth of Hulu's collection that stems from like fucking Sopranos to uh, FX shows to everything in be married, which all that shit, every, classic TV shows, home improvement, all of it. Look at Hulu's catalog on TV one day and tell me there isn't enough to watch for a fucking year of content and then throw everything else in the bag. I mean, a lot of people still get HBO Max or whatever it is with their cable and whatnot. Uh, I think I pay for that, but like. Netflix is becoming one of those things that is increasingly like like my wife watches Gilmore Girls on it. At this point, Black Friday's coming. I'm gonna buy the entire fucking series on digital when I see it on sale. And then that's another nail in the goddamn Netflix coffin. And Disney you know, Plus is also on the chopping block. I, I when that fucker first started, it was eight dollars, and I think it's up to fifteen now. I, uh, just for uh, Disney Plus by itself? Just for Disney Plus, or like 12 or 13. It's it's more than I was paying. What sucks about the uh, strike is that uh, Dune 2 would have came out November 3rd. Gotta wait till next year now. Well, that's, the, that, that's the even crazier thing, is people are going to be starved for content, and the presidential elections are next year, so like the debates and shit are going to matter. That, like Everybody's going to be watching them. Oh, like, yeah. like, especially if Trump is allowed to run, he's going to be, like, the only guy on TV that anybody wants to fucking watch. Like, oh, this is the best reality show in the world. What is it? Oh, it's, it's the election coverage. Nothing will ever come close to those original ones with yeah. him, though, which Lying were just, dead. like, amazing. <laughs> well, there was that one with Hillary where, Hillary where she was saying something. He's like, because you'd be in jail. And then he even walks away. Like, what kind of person in a debate walks away from the podium and takes, like, a victory lap and then comes back and drinks a tiny water? How does that work? This water's so <laughs> tiny because I'm 100% okay with my masculinity. Huge. Huge ego on this guy. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm trying to think of anything I actually liked about Hypnotic, and I just... It was just... It's it's dumb. Like the ending, after the twist is revealed, the ending seems useless. I mean, all it is is like, hey, by the way, we're gonna slaughter everybody. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then if you watch the post credits, it's like, oh, there's gonna be a sequel. Yeah, like, like, okay. like why would anybody make a sequel to this piece of shit? Robin Rodriguez shouldn't be just stick to fucking Spy Kids movies, bro. I'm sorry, Sin City's a long time ago. <laughs> Like, like, fuck, we were just talking about Adam McKay. That motherfucker, I believe the last thing he was not got notoriety for that was big was, didn't he win an Oscar for that one movie with Steve Carell about the pedophilia ring in the news or some shit? I can't remember what it was called, but Adam, I thought, I thought Adam McKay was an Oscar winner for something. I could be wrong. Um... He might have. I know he did the big short. Like the he's big done other short, series. yeah. That that was a, that was a one that he got critical acclaim for, and that was like a serious thing. Like, but we we literally go over to this, and you've got Robert Rodriguez, who is kind of like a Latino action icon director, and you got none of his style, none of his flair. You they reuse the a little bit of the joke from Desperado, like it's just stupid. 
And then all these people are agents who have mind powers, but they're all just like, they're like bad AI in video games that just stand there and point their gun at you, but don't do anything so you can kill them. Hey, why don't you come and take a look at my wares? Yeah, right. <laughs> whoa, 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 buddy. No trouble here. Stop. <laughs> or they crouch down and start walking. <laughs> You know, like it's just, yeah. It's that's it's that sort of silly shit. All right, so let's just fucking get it over with with the numbers. Honestly, I don't want to spoil the twist. If anybody does have interest in watching it, since it's relatively new, all I could say is it is to, in my opinion, equatable per, to Paycheck. Right, like Paycheck was directed by John Woo. That was supposed to be a big American movie starring a new, you know, one of the hottest actors post Armageddon. Ben Affleck, and it's a shit show. This is directed by Robert Rodriguez. None of his flair, none of his style. Ben Affleck acts like he had dental surgery the first half of the movie, then can't stop smiling in a fucking pedophilic way the second half of the movie. Tonally, it makes no fucking sense. The dialogue is stupid. The ripoff of Inception is everywhere. But I won't ruin the the, the fucking... Um, I'm not going to spoil it for everybody. So the main, the potatoes. I, I'm honestly going to go one and a half on this one. Um... It's November. We're doing regular old good old fashioned Chicago dogs. If you've been watching, you know exactly what that is. And boy, I, I'm not going to lie, dude. I was hungry yesterday. And I'm looking at random places around here. I'm going to remember this place because I'm not even joking. They had a five hot dog special. Five Chicago dogs plus a small fry was like $13. I was like, holy fuck, that's cheap. I didn't were order they minis? it. minis? No, they were full on. Like you could, I could have gotten three hot dogs for 11 and then I was like, that's a good deal. And then I saw five for 13. And I was like, even if like, I'm not going to eat five hot dogs right now, but I could put two in the fucking two or three in the fridge. And that's still a hell of a deal. Now I'm in my head. My mind is like, are they all in one bun? Nope. <laughs> no. No. So that's dogs. the thing about the South side. Like sh you can get at the shittiest hole in the wall place. You could still get a good Chicago dog. And it's a simple that like everybody fucking knows. It doesn't matter where you go, unless you order a specific hot dog. People understand. There's no ketchup on the fucker, mustard, relish. It, not everybody uses celery salt. Some people use way too much fucking celery salt, which I don't like. I don't want to eat a piece of fucking salt. I want a goddamn hot dog. There's already enough salt in the hot dog. Yeah, I mean, uh, just a little <laughs> time. Like I'm not. I got to be honest with you. Not the biggest fan of celery salt. I don't yeah, fully I understand it. it. Well, like you ever have a yeah. you ever have like right. a hot dog and you're eating it and then like it's not a seed from the bun, it's a celery salt seed in your fucking tooth. And you're like, what the fuck? Terrible. Fuck them. Get them out of here. I'd rather have ketchup on a hot dog than celery salt. <laughs> fuck you all. Hate me. I don't give a shit. Oh. I I think I'm gonna give this a two. I think it's, everybody yeah. should just at least watch when you're bored. Um, maybe I for, if you hate like yourself the first... a little. For the first 15, 20 minutes, it was just like a background thing for me. I was checking text and stuff, and I was just looking up every time I'd hear something. But then I just sat through the rest of the movie and just, I, I enjoyed it. So it's just two hot dogs for me. <clears throat> yeah, I, there's not really much else to say. I'd say a two. Like, it's it's fine. I, knowing that, now, now knowing that Robert Rodriguez directed it, though, it's just like. It's a letdown, isn't it? Like, he did this piece of shit? But also, it's like were you were you just trying to like try something new? Like he wrote like, it with somebody else too, so whoever Max something or other. But the story and, they try to make it convoluted, like Inception. But it's a very simple story. There's like not really any mystery to be had in it. It's pretty straightforward. But when I when I was watching it, I was even thinking like, okay, this it's not the same as Inception, but it has the same vibe. And had I had Inception never come out. I mean, this movie's still just, it's kind of mediocre. And, like, Ben phones in his performance. Um, <laughs> and the the chick who, I've, I've seen her in other stuff. I can't think of what the hell she's been in. Um, she even she even seemed like she was kind of phoning it in. Oh, wasn't she uh, Queen of the South or some shit like that? that? That TV show in USA? I feel like I've seen her in a couple things, and I can't. Suicide Squad? Was she in Suicide Squad? Yeah. Yeah, she played the Raging Cajun. Sola Soria. Eh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. All right, so <laughs> let's get on to the next shit show. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, all right, I, I, all right. I was thinking about this. By the end of the movie, when Vin Diesel was driving down a dam that was being uh, just covered in an exploded, fiery hot fuel, I was, I had a thought. My first thought was I was a little hungry. My second thought was this movie is so fucking stupid. And my third thought was. You, there is a defense to be made of Fast 10, or Fast X, Latino X. By the way, Michelle Rodriguez has Stallone's hair from Rambo in this fucking movie, bro. What yes. the fuck? Why does she look like she, she's terrible? She's a bad actress. For one thing, you're talking not potential vehicular combat, but for sure vehicular combat. The motorcycle is the dumbest fucking choice of a vehicle you could think of. It's like Jason Momoa is coming in like a fucking full-on fledged gonna destroy you vehicle and she's like, I got him! And she's skipping tires and doing shit that's impossible. Anyway. Fuck. I hated this movie. But <laughs> we people rag on the Fast series for no longer being a car movie and being too much of an action movie. Which, by the way, they don't it's even... Not an they don't even... No, it is an action movie. It is. They don't even fucking hide it because the very beginning of the movie is them acting like they're all fucking James Bond. Like, this is the street hood unit Dom Toretto's James Bond crew that's going to be gallivanting across... The, oh, we got a mission in Rome, y'all. Intel's good. Intel? Who the fuck is feeding your ass Intel, bro? What do you mean, <laughs> Intel? Like, who is backing you? Oh, it's the agency. Snake, Snake Plissken. Yeah, well, he's, he didn't see him in this movie. I'm surprised. Did, why did he not come out at the end along with Gal Gadot and fucking The Rock, which he literally took him five minutes to film on a fucking green screen? You could tell his entire outfit was green screen. He was just saying, put on a green fucking suit. You're going to be in the end credits. And he's like, oh, you know, I don't like Vin Diesel. And then he's like, they're like, all right, hold on. And they rip a check out and they throw it away. And as the... The guy's looking at him. He's the rock's like, I don't think I can do it. And he's just like, more zeros. <laughs> and he shows it to him, and the rock kind of gives him the eyebrow, and he's like, <laughs> the rock's like, let's do it. And he films for five fucking minutes on a green screen, and that's the post credit scene in this fucking movie. Once again, though, what other? Mo Here's my point. What other movies? in the action landscape, are delivering this type of action. This is big budget, not great, but serviceable CG, on massive scales. Action is so dead in Hollywood that there is credence to the fact that they are a franchise that still does the ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, this movie is beyond fucking ridiculous. But... Where else can American audiences see that? What other franchise out there is, besides a Marvel movie like the Marvels that is 99% CG that fucking buff on goo nobody cares about, where could they see action on this level for two hours and 15 minutes? Because to be fair to this movie, as ludicrous and as stupid and as poorly written and as just pure bad acting as this movie is, it's what you would call a high octane theater film that's got explosions every five minutes. When Fucking... you went with Ludacris, I thought you were going to start naming the ca the characters. Right. Their, their yeah, names. no, each one of them. Well, that's the other thing, right? This is like the Avengers of fucking degenerates. You've got. Every character from the past, present, and future of the franchise, including his little bastard child who's driving now, right? And instead of starting the movie showing you what happened to Mr. Nobody, aka Kurt Russell, He's just fucking not in the movie at all and just mentioned, replaced by his daughter. Brie Larson. Brie Larson, who has the charisma of a mop. Like, there's the one scene where she, uh, towards the end, where she comes up behind Jason Momoa, and I'll get to Jason Momoa, but this is where she okay. comes up behind Jason Momoa and kills his two guys and, like, lunges off of the body onto a car. And you literally, like, why did you use that take? Because you see her leg kind of flail from where the wire work picked her up. And it's like, clearly she's not in control here. She was in heels, man. Oh, and then all I, <laughs> all I heard about was, oh, when Michelle and I filmed this fight scene, the director wasn't even there. Then they made it seem like they, oh, that's our fight. We came up with it. You know how your fight scene, you didn't come up with it? 
there's a scene where you lunge through glass and then fall to a below deck, which required wire work and stuntmen and specific camera angles. So whether the director was taking a shit while you filmed the scene or not, do you mean to tell me there wasn't choreography and stunt people and preparation? So this shit of like, yeah, the director was... Who the fuck cares that the DP and everybody else was there? Also, it wasn't a good... It was okay. For one thing, you got mini Rambo, which, by the way, some of the camera angles they use is just doesn't make any sense because you've got Michelle Rodriguez going toe-to-toe with Charlize Theron, and they do nothing to hide the height difference. Like, there's a side angle where they're, they, they fist fight right after they get released from the medical things. Mm-hmm. And you can see Charlize Theron's like eight inches fucking taller than Michelle Rodriguez. And her haircut, too. I, I didn't... Dude, with that haircut, she, t- she would so be the woman that, like, calls the cops on skaters at a park. <laughs> By the way, she you was... know... Oh, sorry, go ahead. So that same haircut, Han had that in nine when he came back to life. <laughs> he had <back> to life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did come back to life. Also, you know what? I'm just going to say this, and I've been over this for a long time. I'm over this women's power shit, right? Like, yes, Charlize Theron can kung fu this shit out of seven dudes wearing body armor. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez is built like a tank, apparently, so we, she can just... She could take unlimited amounts of damage without really any sort of whatever. I do find it funny that like Michelle Rodriguez and Charlie Saren have a fist fight and they, uh, they both have in the movies taken up full groups of men but have a hard time fighting each other. And that's supposed to be me thinking, oh, they're just that evenly. No, it's piss poor writing and it's fucking fake. Like, why? I want to see a fist fight between Dom and Charlie Theron. And Vin Diesel's not going to have it in his fucking contract. He's going to lose a fight. And I don't even want to see a... Re- I want to see a realistic fist fight, which is she punches him in the face, and he decks her and skull fractures half of her fucking face. And she's just sitting on the floor bleeding and gurgling while her eye is hanging loose. I want to see a realistic fight. But no, Dom is off in fucking wherever the hell he is. He's in Brazil for half the movie looking sad. Now... In in number nine, I think it was they they actually had a fight scene with, um, with three women and a bunch of guys that kept coming in, and it actually took the three women to always beat the one guy down, you know, and and that, I think that was the most realistic fight scene that they had for the women out of the, the entire franchise that I watched, and I watched it all in like two days. Um, <laughs> Why, you tortured man, yourself man. on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. That's some that's some risky business there. Uh, speaking I, of other side I, characters. <laughs> You do have John Cena back. You've got uh, Han is back. You've got Rome and Ludacris and Charlie Theron's and Michelle Rodriguez. You have Jordan Brewster, I think is her name. Uh, the Jordana Brewster. Jordana yeah. Brewster's back in it. Gal Gadot makes a cameo. The Rock makes a cameo in the end credits. Uh, Kurt, Kang. Kurt Russell still hasn't been seen. This movie ends on a fucking cliffhanger, which is ugh. Whoever thought that was a good idea. Like, especially the way they ended it. It's ended like an episode of Batman in the 60s. Yeah, to be continued. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, guy, the, the guy who runs the agency, was, wasn't that Reacher? Isn't he like a yeah, new uh, Reacher? Yeah, another waste of a character. Reacher, who the whole movie, you're like, he's the bad guy. And then, like, he's, he's a dick the whole time, so it's easy to be like, yeah, no, he's a bad guy. And then uh, you're like, oh, no, he, he's, a, he's a good guy because he's helping Dom. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, wait, no. Bad guy turn. And at the it end, he, he's a bad guy. It would have been better if, to, if it was Little Nobody. Because it, it, Little Nobody, uh, Scott Eastwood. Yeah, that uh, would have made more sense. Yeah, because cause he, he was like pivotal in, in number nine, and he, he actually was against them the whole time, and then at the end was like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Or you know what would have been and, awesome? Let's get The Rock to work with uh, Momoa as the bad guy in the sequel, fucking Samoa Connection or something. I don't know. Wasn't uh, What's-His-Name supposed to be in this, or is that the future movies? Who? Uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, he was in oh, Hobbs, and, uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, that's the one I didn't see, okay. That's actually the best Fast and the Furious movie to come out in a while. It's a good movie. It's a, <laughs> if, if, you, if, you liked, <laughs> if you liked, if you liked, uh, fucking Hypnotic, go, Shobbs and Haw is just a, a, night, a fun, dumb action movie with him and Statham. Like, and that's, I mean that in every compliment I can. It's, it's an enjoyable watch. But does the rock start doing his stupid little catchphrases that he, that just start to look like shit every time he says it? Alex, I'm going to answer your question with just a little bit of knowledge. 
in their contracts for this movie, both Statham, Statham and The Rock had literal number amount percentages and or numbers of strikes they would allow their character to take before they decimated somebody. That's really fucking stupid, and it makes me hate them both even more. Yeah, they each had... All the action stars, like The Rock and shit, have clauses in their contract that their characters are only allowed to take so much damage so it doesn't fuck up with their tough guy image. I will say, I'd love to see John Cena and or Reacher take over the Schwarzenegger role. There's the one scene where John Cena's fighting the dudes in um, Brian's house because he's just such an absentee father, he's not home. And John Cena comes and uh, <laughs> rescues the day. And some of the action, some of the action scenes are done okay. That scene in particular made me really wish that they would have just <clears throat> John Cena would have fully embraced it and started doing Schwarzenegger style action movies that were ludicrous and big budget. And instead, he went low budget and <laughs> shitty with his career. And by the way, half the time in this movie that he's in, he looks like he just filmed it while on break from Vacation Friends and didn't uh-huh. even change the costume. Oh, I, I don't understand how they put. Brian's wife Mia in this but not him or the kids you know like in some form him in some form but they have her they have them at at her, her house with Vin Diesel's kid but her kids are gone someplace safe but not Vin Diesel's kid well, I mean, like, so that, well that's the other thing she's that, like I gotta go to Brian and it's like he ain't going nowhere he's in a cemetery <laughs> I, I, I would assume they're gonna do some sort of reface they're gonna probably for... use his brothers again, doing the mocap, yeah. and then just put the. That they have to because, like, it literally makes no sense that they have a scene where, like, John Cena is the savior in a scene where Brian should be there protecting his family. Well, yeah, so I believe in one of the movies, the end credits, the his skyline shows up at the, uh, the like barbecue, but they don't show anyone get out of the car. Well, that's yeah. the whole thing is he's still alive in the universe. He's just out, but somehow his wife isn't out completely. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. No, none of this movie makes any sense. Now let's talk about Jason Momoa. Jason, Jason Mimosa. I think his character would have been better for a different movie, not this, but that character, Dude, I didn't find it amusing. He literally, it's <laughs> almost like they, we, they were like, we need you to portray the Joker if he was bisexual. And that you have Jason Momoa's best performance in this movie. The Joker, if he was played by Jared Leto. Yeah, the yeah the Joker. Well, the, the Joker, if he was played by John Waters in some scenes. And there's weird scenes in this movie, like when he's talking to the dead cops or dead agency members or whatever the fuck that, they are. Yeah, I, dude, his character was so fucking annoying. And like, I got what they were going for. And like, if it wasn't in a Fast and the Furious movie, like if he was just like a villain in another rated R violent fucked up movie where like he could actually slip people's throats and shit maybe that character would have worked a little bit better because it would have been his seedy psychopathicness you know next to another dark imagery but the problem was in this movie it doesn't come off menacing it comes off cartoonish you know it comes off like i'm a joke yes and then he's like i just killed one of your friends and it's like well if he feels like he doesn't belong in this movie at all. And to me, it's unfortunate because he's a pretty goofy guy. And when he's like awkward and whimsical, there's a movie on Netflix called Slumberland um, that we watched with uh, my son. And he's fucking fantastic in it. Like, Well, that's the thing is he's the only one in this movie that actually seems like he gave a shit about his performance. It's just the direction of his character isn't great. Like, out the, of everybody the, in the movie, he's the only one that doesn't seem like they're phoning in their performance for the tenth time. The, 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 all the Botox in Vin Diesel's face won't allow him to do facial expressions, dude, so it was all the same. Dude, what sort of CG are they doing? Because literally, <laughs> he's got scenes where he's all like, he's, he's like, he drinks every day. He's puffy faced and shit. And then they go to like a side profile and he's slim and cut like he was back in the Riddick days. You and ever, it's just kind of like, what in the Photoshop fuck is going on here? Like, is he wearing a green suit so they can get rid of his fucking Corona gut? <laughs> as a kid have you ever like not to abuse an animal but like hold their head back so they're like skid yes. like look weird he looks like that in this movie like so does Charlize the Theron scene. like Charlize Theron didn't look like she could create a tear if she wanted to <laughs> like she read the script and she's like I'll film it but I, I don't you know I don't have to cry right and she's like what do you mean you have to be in a lot of pain 
And she's like, yeah, no, no, but I, I, I can't, I literally can't cry right now. And it's going to be probably six months till I can. <laughs> Michelle, I can't even, what, sweat. I can't even yeah, sweat in this part of yeah, my they, face. You don't understand. <laughs> I have no glands in my face for another six months. They're gone. <laughs> Bye. And Michelle Rodriguez, dude, we all know I don't like her, but like between the 1980s Rambo hair and the fuck like Stallone hair and the fucking just her, she's a bad, act. I don't care what anybody says. She's not a good actress. Like, no matter yeah, what she role she was. is, she sounds like she's the younger sister trying to hang out with her older brother's friends. Vin Diesel was also never a good actor. I will say, uh, Vin Diesel does deserve credit because he did have a string of movies that were legit. Pitch Black is legit. I even like Chronicles of Riddick. Find Me Guilty. Find Me Guilty, but that's even later on. I mean, I'll even go um, Knock Around Guys wasn't a bad movie. Like, early Vin Diesel, A Boiler Room... Like, then when he hit hit it big, you started getting goofy shit. You started getting like, no, you're the next big action star. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool. I hope he just leverages the millions they pay him for the, the that they, I mean, these movies still make bank. So hopefully the millions of dollars he's making helps him fund the next Riddick movie, I guess, like he did the last one. So you said something about cartoony, uh, how it's too cartoony or whatever. From when Seven ended... I, and eight and eight nine and ten and ten those they all just became more yeah. cartoony as as the years went by, and I think I think it was because uh what's his, what's it called Brian uh what's his name um uh, the well, actor, yeah, dead guy Paul Walker yeah I think he I think he had a uh, I think he had a major hand in keeping it like like a little bit grounded I, mean, I to think he most... was responsible for the revival number four is like revival of the original cast in the first place yeah and I, I think it was his vision that kept it to be relevant. Where it, it was still kind of hokey, but it was still more like you know a car they, movie. Yeah, they, they weren't yeah, thro- they weren't he, throwing helicopters at other cars that had blown up. Pardon, pardon my pun, but he didn't want the franchise to go up in flames. Is what yeah. Paul Walker. You know, you uh, say and that, and the last thing, I, last <laughs> photo I have of him is his charred remains they had from the zoomed in paparazzi photo. But I think if they would have ended this this franchise at at seven, it would have been all right. Yeah, dude, Dwayne, it's, I, it's gotten so it's gotten goofy, like, but it doesn't have any background, like, to tie anything together besides, like, we're all and like, how many times in this movie was the word family used? And not just by Vin, by other people. Everybody, yeah, every even Allison Bree was like, we need to watch out for him and his family. Like, <laughs> right? Like every time she said she talked about helping him, she's like, we got to help Dom and his family, and it's like, stop it, fucking stop yeah, it, stay to fucking meme, stop fucking making the fucking meme a real fucking thing. There's also the the little kid uh, quotes some lines from earlier movies, and also yeah. there's there's scenes in this Can't movie rain all the where time. where <laughs> there's there's pictures in the garage or there's pictures in uh jason momoa's hideout that are supposed to be pictures but they're literal stills from the other movies mm-hmm. and it's like that doesn't make any sense well, okay. also the first sense. the first 15 minutes of this movie is literally fa- fast and the furious five footage and then i pause literally a 30 seconds into the movie i pause it and i go all right, so you may not, I tell my wife, I go, you may not remember, is what this is going to be, is this entire scene is we're going to go back to Fast Five, and they're going to add Jason Momoa into that movie. So it's going to be like, he was there the whole time, but he wasn't fucking there. So watch, and exactly what I said they were going to do, oh, he's the driver in the car with the machine gunner that got knocked off the bridge, and it's just like, this is the oldest fucking cliche in sequel hell in any fucking movie. I think even Back to the Future had that when they went and they did the second one and they refilmed scenes in the first one where Marty's in the background of as Marty's playing well, the guitar. he knocks like, himself out with the yeah, door. Yeah, like mm-hmm. this is the oldest fucking device in movies you could think of and they're li- the writers are literally like, it's number 10. What do you want from us? <laughs> like at this point, they're just, the, the, the fucking Vin Diesel goes into the writer's room and he's like, look, I don't need cohesion. I don't need solid storytelling. I need you to get to figure out point A to point B of how I destroy cars on a bridge with helicopters that I brought down with my vehicle. Like, they're not even... All they're doing is writing story to connect the ridiculous action scenes. To me, though, this the, the Fast and Furious franchise has always been a parallel for uh, comic book movies. Um, because I... I don't have an issue with comic book movies. They're they're dumb. 
I don't have an issue with the Fast and Furious movies because I know they're dumb. I have an issue with the people that like them because you can you can find these movies enjoyable. They make a lot of money. They're really stupid. But I, I've known people, I know people who try to argue with me that these are really good movies. And there's a difference between, like, a dumb, fun movie and you telling me that Fast X is a good piece of cinema. Like, I just... Yeah, like... Like, no, yeah, I, I'm with you. That's ridiculous. And if you think that, then you're just the, the kind of dumbed-down human that they want to appeal to. That, oh, explosions. Once again, though, there is credence to say, and I'll ask this again, can you guys think of a single movie or franchise out there right now that is giving action scenes at the level that Fast is? As ridiculous as they are, and as non-logical and stupid and almost marvel comic-y they are because they're so unrealistic what other movie out there in the past five years is delivering besides the john wick franchise which is a different story entirely is delivering third like mainstream action scenes like this that you can think of well here i'll i'll add to that a studio will probably argue you can't make twisted metal into a movie fast and furious has done twisted metal Better than Twisted Metal. Oh, are you like, talking about the rocket car that John Cena was just making in his underground lander, lander for no reason? <laughs> yeah. Also, a car that shoots out a giant bomb. Like, the, the crazy car action in these movies is insanely stupid, but at the same time, you, you just can't take your eyes off of it. I mean, that I will say, I was watching, and I don't, I don't particularly like the movie at all, but I haven't seen an action movie that's mainstream like this one have as many explosions and high stakes and craziness that like yeah it's cartoony but i'm not gonna lie and say some of the action set pieces weren't at least fun to watch like i had to hold back everything in my power to not fucking 10 second fast forward everything in between but and i mean other the action scenes are, are are for what they are if you can if you can just watch them and go this is 100 percent unrealistic it's stupid it's comical but it might be a little fun I can understand how you can enjoy the movie from that person. Like, I, went, I spent 15 bucks for a movie ticket. I'm in the giant fucking screen. I got my popcorn. I get to sit down for two and a half, two, two hours and 15 minutes and watch. 220. Yeah, 221 two, or whatever. Two hours and 20 minutes and watch nothing but explosions and shitty dialogue. Kind of sounds like the 80s movie going experience. I, the, something I've noticed in this movie, um, aside from the whole movie being a fucking music video, which was pissing me off. Oh, God. Um, it's an issue that a lot of, like, huge set piece movies have, and the MCU has it really bad. There's something going on with studios, like, shotgunning graphic artists, uh, just doing shitty CGI. And Are you referencing the, the helicopters ish? once they crash? Like, all of the fire in this movie looked awful. Mm -hmm. Like, Alan Wake's graphics are better. Well, the, the problem nowadays is, like, these studios want to make these huge, like, bombastic set pieces. <coughs> and I'd, I'd hate to be a, a graphic artist in the industry because you're just putting out shit. Yeah. Like, it's like, Endgame is cool, that big scene of, like, all the superheroes but like if you dial that back even with the action in this movie you could have sharper cleaner looking cgi it doesn't have to be yeah it is, it is very almost anti-alias it's very greased up is how i always called it like it's got it's too much blur in it yeah it's just it's like trans that's it's the like, same thing i said about the last transformers is the cgi was just in general blurry yeah, and, and it's just, it's got to suck working in the industry knowing, like, you're rushed to do this work. Like, an MCU, they're notoriously, they rush their graphic artists. Well, that's why and Iron Man in Endgame, the biggest Marvel Comic Universe movie of all time, looks like his head is floating half the time you see him in his armor in Endgame. Yeah, and then you go, you go see your work in theaters, and you're like, man, that looks like shit. Right. I it took 25 or... hours just to design the way the suit looked, and then this is how you implemented it? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, you I, you or... see that corner? That corner took six hours! You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Or that person's sitting on his pocket this way because his pocket's a little fat, and he's, like, watching the... the well, like, see, no, 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 that, that's Kevin Feige. <laughs> the writers are probably one hundred and fifty to 200000 a year, or the uh, CGI guys and everything. You gotta remember they off they also offshore the work to so many different crews 
I mean, when you oh, yeah. talk in a movie like a Marvel budget movie, there's so many different hands into that pot. Like, this well, person only designs the feet of this person's suit type shit. This this Fast X had, what, $340 million? I mean, is it, that how much it made? It apparently... It, no, that's how much... They made about $704 million. It didn't do as well numbers as the other wise. I think the, the total, you know, were. I think the total was 900 million or something like that. And then somebody was like, the movie's garbage and it didn't do as well as the others, but let's not pretend it did well. Yeah, opening week, it got 67 million. There's still huge movies. And I'm telling you, I think a big part of it is it's hitting nostalgia because dudes our age who grew up and they were in high school or eighth grade or whatever. <sighs> Saw this movie and were like, yeah, dude, fucking cars are awesome and Vin Diesel's fucking awesome. And now they get to take their kids to a movie and share kind of that same love. And it's a big, dumb action movie. And it's you get to you get to go home and drive home and kind of, oh, that was fun. And then forget about it. And you, know, you wait till you rent it or you see it for cheap on sale or it comes to Peacock or whatever. And you go, oh, man, maybe I'll watch it again. You probably never will. I, I fucking hate these movies. I hate them so much. A while back, I, I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I bought a Blu-ray collection of like the first seven or whatever. I was like, I'm going to just spend a weekend and watch them all. I got to the second one. I was like, I like, I feel embarrassed to be watching this I, right now. I, I will say, I, I do think number one and number five are still solid movies for what they are in different reasons. Number one, I think, is still a good late 90s, early 2000s street car movie with something like the gang kind of shit action in it. Number five, I think, is a good movie in a the grounds of kind of a badass action movie. That's the one where you first have The Rock come in. They're in Brazil. They st- a, lot, a lot of the footage you saw in this fucking movie was from number five. So, oh, like... what? When I worked out in uh, Rochelle, um, it was a a very, like, country area, and me and my buddies out there, I worked at an auto parts store, and the uh, game we would play is, while all the customers come in, it'd be just all fucking old farmers, we would try to see who can insert as many fast and furious (laughs) quotes appropriately into a conversation with a customer as possible, and none of these dudes knew what we were talking about. Um... But yeah, in from from the first movie up till this movie, the dialogue in this movie is fucking terrible, dude. The, when the terrible. kid when the kid is like, you know, it doesn't matter if it's by a quarter inch or a quarter mile. I was like, oh, he's got autism too, just like Dom. Damn it, <laughs> it's genetic. Yeah, he takes after his daddy. Son of a bitch. There's- there's uh there's a lot of like gotcha quotes that they try to do where like the camera pans and someone's like oh yeah this thing and it's like we saw you waiting for the camera to turn over and say your stupid line like it i i feel like the the cast is so well known for this movie that they all had to make sure like i get to say like this many cool things it's hard he yeah, it, to say one more cool It's thing hard to make, make a point. cohesive story when each actor has a minimum amount of screen time they require on screen. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. part of why the movie it's the movie's so overbloated with people that it you know, you got to have the fight scene but, between Charlize Theron and uh Michelle Rodriguez, but don't forget you got to have the fight scene between uh, this oh, you got to have the fist fight scene between Roman and Ludacris cuz that's felt- pertinent. I felt so bad for uh, the guys from Tokyo Drift, though. Uh, Little Bow Wow and fucking the other guy. Yeah, they never got invited back. They're like, yeah, we don't need these leeches. They, they were just like, they were just like in like, you know, two minute scenes here, two minute scenes there. I mean, fuck, dude. The bad guy from number five who has been dead for years has more screen time in this movie than Gal Gadot. Let that sink in. That is true. Well, she's too busy pissing off people with her. Uh graphic videos that she's putting out what is she oh is she doing <laughs> palestinian israeli videos yeah yeah she was in the israeli <laughs> army yeah she can go fuck herself too uh yeah i mean the, the both sides of that no no i i mean the problem is as like just a, a white fat american i think people need to realize like if you're in that boat they neither side really likes you very much I will say this, the one side has been like, we're going to kill all the other people, like, we don't like them at all, and we're just going to do what we're going to do, and then the other side has been like, well, we're going to kill all those people, but then we're going to come for you, and, I mean, out of the two sides, if I had to pick, 
I wouldn't side with the side that said that I'm next. You know, that's that's my really only take on it. I don't have support for either one of them. I think the whole thing is beyond. Uh, I mean, that's it's a blood holy war that's been going on for how many fucking years? You know what I mean? Like that's beyond most people's scopes. Neither side is right. Both sides have done atrocities, and it's going to continue. And I, I do think that the U.S. as an ally to Israel does need to be like, whoa, maybe, maybe less women and children dead would be fucking nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't look very good. But hey, who the fuck knows? I will say, if everybody over there did watch Fast X together, it might uh, <laughs> might create some peace. And they, some, they're talking about family. Some family, right? Maybe the, as as like as. Uh, one of the characters dies, you know, like they all kind of look over at each other with a tear in their eye and they're just like, family. They all start hugging and then stabbing each other to death. Um, yeah, that's how that would work out because then they'd realize that it ends on a cliffhanger and they're like, well, the war is going to kill us all before the second one comes out, so fuck it. Uh, here's, here's an off topic uh, thing. You don't I, get I'm, much I'm more off you. topic than war talk in a movie review show. So please. It's, it's off topic for both of those. Um, in the in the spot where Giovanni's supposed to be, is that a bathroom with a toilet in the movies? <laughs> is that a gold toilet? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I pull, make sure you got the stream <laughs> pulled up, right? And that is the thumbnail for today's episode. And I'll pull it up for you. And yes, there is a toilet on there. <laughs> so I'll just pull it up real quick. Since if you didn't get another small on there, so we didn't get a chance to see it. Let's see if I can integrate it. And now it's sharing the Discord. Uh, you know what I can do. I'm gonna pop it up on screen just in case you didn't get a chance to see the thumbnail today. Yeah, so the thumbnail I went with was uh, <laughs> if I can get this fucking thing to work right, it's not letting me extend it. Yeah, it was a saw bathroom with a toilet, and the other two movies kind of hovered above said toilet as they were going into said toilet because that's where these movies both belong is in a there golden is. toilet of death. Yeah, if you got the stream up, you should be able to see it now. It's covering my face, yes. Yeah, I, I think if I if I end. woke up in a uh, dungeon-esque bathroom, there was a tape, and I had to hit play. Jigsaw said I could see my family if I watched these two movies back again. Back to back. I'd just be like, you know what, dude? I, I had a good run. Just fucking... Dude, that'd, be, fu that'd be funny if he's like, do you want to play a game? And you're like, I'm not doing Tell it, Tell my dude. family and, I love them. Yeah, he's like, you nah. can see your family again if you watch these. And you're like, I'm not doing it. He's like, really? And you're just like, yeah, no, I can't. And he's just like, all you have to do is watch two movies. And you're just like, I, I, I can't do it, dude. Just go ahead and kill me. And yeah. he's just like, I, I'm not even prepared to kill you, really. I thought you would watch the movies. <laughs> like, he's just all thrown off and shit. Um, all right, I, I'm ready for the scow. Let's, I'm, uh, hot dogs, delicious Chicago dogs, shouldn't even be wasted on movies like this, but from the sheer idea that you don't see action movies like this anymore, anywhere really, I, I'm gonna go two out of five, but honestly, if you, if it was like, if I was like, I'll never watch this movie again. <laughs> uh, I can't give this higher than a one. I understand I just... that. I, I do I do wholeheartedly agree with you though. Like I, I'll I'll say this, like these movies make money for a reason and whether you like them or not, there's like Matt said, there's no other IP doing stuff like the Fast and Furious. You make the jokes about like are they gonna go to space next? Because they did that in nine already. Yeah, it would it's because well, yeah. it's because <laughs> it's that because it's that crazy of a franchise. Like, they can do stuff like that. You know, actually, there weird. is... I'm sorry, there is one franchise that is doing it still, and that is Mission Impossible. Okay, yeah. Well, because well, they got Xenu. Yeah, they, they got Lord Scientology mm -hmm. over there. He's just got a protective bubble shield. He, he Every time he rolls, he rolls 15 and above. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's such a unique... It's such a unique franchise that seeing the end where Dom drives a charger which in the movie he goes through like seven of them no there is the uh, one time where he bangs it the fuck up hitting the bomb and then later on they show it and they pull a total uh commando and it doesn't look like it's banged up at all yeah it's, but at the end of the movie seeing him drive down a dam like a hot wheels a car franchise yeah it, it's such a unique franchise in that in my head i'm like 
Oh yeah, that they would they would totally have that in this movie. Well, yeah, you know um, that's, that's supposed to be the same car every time. You know that, right? Yeah, his dad's charger that he rebuilds. That he rebuilds. Like, here's yeah, the thing. I... <laughs> no other franchise. I mean, the, the the Fast and the Furious somehow makes the movie by the end of the movie feel like a disaster movie. And it's it literally a movie about car enthusiasts who somehow became spies and superheroes. Like, it's just fucking ridiculous. Who Who is it that does the disaster movies? Is it Roland Emmerich? Uh, yeah. Roland Emmerich? I want him to do a Fast and Furious movie. I guarantee goddamn to you, that would be the most epic Fast and the Furious. Because here's the thing. The audience is already okay with cheesiness and goofiness. And that's the problem that Roland Emmerich has always had is his movies get a little too too cheesy and goofy. So you mean if they gave him the green light and they were like, do you boo, it'd be the best Fast and the Furious movie out there ever made. Yeah, except he's old, so he'd be like, say no more, fam, or yeah. whatever. I got whatever you um, fuckheads are talking about these. Give me unlimited CGI budget, I'll give you a good looking movie, you fucks. Yeah, I can't I can't give this higher than a one though. I mean, if you distill it down to just being something else it's just a goofy like it's a dumb movie um it's it you can probably find it more enjoyable than a marvel movie or something else but it's it's got the same like flair it's just the, the problem is is it's l- becoming less lethal weapon and more loaded weapon starting oh, yeah. you know what i mean like you know what i mean it's, it's almost, Nielsen, yeah. yeah almost becoming a parody of itself in how ridiculous it's getting It's almost like the dialogue where he's like, these guys have defied this and gravity. It's almost like that character, the guy that Reacher plays, was was speaking for the audience and was just like, none of this shit fucking makes sense. Why have we allowed this for six movies? Like, that character was talking for the audience. Roman does it too during this movie. He's talking about, he's like, I'm special. He's like, "I, I didn't, I got shot. I'm still alive. We shouldn't be surviving these. He was like, yeah. he was doing this. There was thing. some, there was almost some fourth wall breaking there. And it was almost like they didn't pay attention to what the writers were saying. And the writers were like, get me out of my contract, dude. I can't believe I'm writing <laughs> Fast and the Furious. Fire movie. me for this line, please. Right. Like, <laughs> I, you know, part of me feels like the right, they, there is no writers and it's just Vin Diesel using uh, Chat GPT. Yeah, Chat GPT. To How would it. Dom Toretto get out of a situation where there's two gas tankers going to run into him and his child and he's on top of a dam and has to escape? Then Chat TP's like Tom Toretto in his charger that he's rebuilt sixteen times would drive down the dam. Yeah, damn the dam, damn the dam. Man, you said you said lethal weapon is kind of a tangent, but uh, I think it was a weekend or two ago. We went out to New Lenox where my wife works uh, to do a bunch of stuff, and we found this small like mom and pop like hot dog like American food joint. It's owned by this like ex firefighter. You go in there and it's nothing but like eighties posters of action movies. And the menu is so stupid. Like it the food was very mediocre, but he had like uh I got like lethal weapon fries. There were Terminator nachos. And I was talking to the dude and I was like he's like, I just had I grew up with this love of like eighties culture. Like there's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger posters. That's cool. And I yeah, the place was, it's a bit overpriced and it's mediocre, but I told Shay, I was like, I totally want to come back and just yeah, like. I just want to support, support these fucking nerds. <laughs> yeah, like, it's fucking awesome. But... Alex, what's your final uh, hot dog count on this one? Um, It was going to be a one, but I do like Jason Momoa's character, so that's a 1.5 for me. Uh, but he was it's unique it's... in this movie. He was the like, only one Ray that gave a unique. shit in his performance. That's what I'm saying. If he was, If he was in a different movie, as a villain, it would be fucking pretty yeah. funny. It'd like, be pretty if it goofy. would have been in a legitimate dark movie where he was the character that was outlandish and goofy on the background of all the murders, mm-hmm. that would have worked. I, I was thinking the same thing. Like, if you put him in a movie where it's, like, an action movie that's rated R and it's all about this psychopath, you know, terrorizing some ex-cop or something, yeah. it would have totally worked. But the problem is the movie's so goofy that when Jason Momoa's goofy... It just ramps it up to cartoonish instead of keeping it like menacing. I agree, yeah. yeah. But yes, yeah, so it's a one point five. I, 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 like I said, I watched what five fucking movies of Fast and Furious, and as they as they hit seven, because I haven't seen them, and I, you know, if I'm gonna watch the tenth version of it, I'm, I'm gonna catch up a little bit. You know, so I, I dedicated this. I'm week sure to there's, that. I'm sure there's a YouTube video you could have watched that summed <laughs> it all up for like twenty yeah. minutes of your day. But from the seventh movie, when when uh, Paul Walker actually does pass away, in each movie they talk about him and they reference him so much 
and they say that they're out of the game, but then Mia's always in there. Mia's yep. always, you know, some kind of form. My husband's then, out of the game, but I'll still put myself and family in danger. And and then they, they never bring the children around. So it's like, wh- why are you writing this st- that, that stupid? Like, it, it's yeah. really stupid the, writing. We understand you can't include them. I'm sorry, Jordana Brewster, you shouldn't be in the movie either. I know you want the money right. in the acting role, but, like, your character doesn't belong here anymore. Yeah, you're done. You're out. And it's sorry that, you know, Paul Walker passed away and it fucked up your life, but sh- you're done. Yeah, I'm sorry he yeah. burned to death. Whoopsie daisies him, huh? Yeah, I knew, I knew a couple young kids at my one job who had four Paul stickers on their cars. Oh God! And it's like, dude, like you're such a fucking. There's loser. no difference. That was like when I was in high school and Dimebag Daryl died, and there's a bunch of kids with like his photo on their locker. I think. <laughs> Why was it on your locker before he died? I mean, it doesn't matter. Put a piece of paper <laughs> on your locker. His brains are still over the wall of that fucking nightclub. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know how to run. I'm sorry you feel bad. I mean, it sucks that he's gone, sure, but fuck, your piece of paper ain't doing nothing, loser. Also, I'll spit also, on it. Go do Paul some more Walker. black tooth grins. Paul Walker was notoriously a piece of shit. Right? He was a terrible father until like the very end of his child's life before he passed away. It's like, hey, I gotta, I gotta, I love my daughter. She's the only thing that matters to me. Oh, yeah? What are you doing today? Oh, I'm going to go to get in this car with a driver who's going to drive it too fast, and it's a particular car that around corners tends to lose control. Like, what kind of irresponsible fuck are you to even get in that fucking car with if your daughter is like, you know, I've never understood dudes that are like, oh, my family's the, the only thing that matters, but they put themselves at risk every fucking, you know what I mean? Like, Tom he Cruise never... clearly doesn't give a shit about his family. <laughs> The multiple families that he's had. Yeah, he's just like, um, out of all my kids, they could suck a dick. I'm going to strap myself to a helicopter and fly into a volcano today. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> like, he doesn't give any care about his family in the world. That's something, too, about Paul Walker. Like, he's he's never been a good actor. He was never the thing good is, I actually kind of started to like Paul Walker at the end of his career. Like, I love running scared, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah. You know, other than that, he didn't have. A, I mean, he did a, a couple other things, and Skulls. he was really. He was really well. He had that uh, the remake of that B, the District B thirteen called Brick Mansions. Like he was trying to establish himself in the action movie genre game, but you know he liked race cars, and he decided to crash into a fucking pole. You're forgetting his first movie, which was a low budget quote unquote horror movie. What the fuck is the name of it? Was it Skulls? No, it's where he put his brain gets put in a dinosaur. Tammy and the T-Rex. <laughs> oh, I know what movie, yeah. What was it called? Tammy and the T-Rex. Okay. <laughs> it's like RoboCop 2 when they put Kane's brain in the fucking Ed 209 looking thing and just feed him drugs the whole time. Where's Kane? There's going to be trouble. All right, everybody. Oh, I want oh. to watch RoboCop. Now. I know. I, I was just thinking, I was sitting on the couch. I was playing the, I've been playing the game. I'm close to the end of the game. And the dialogue from Murphy is all Peter Weller, but it's just so, it's a mixed bag. Like, some of it is great, and then some of it's just like, did he film this in the bathroom in an airplane? Like, why is this, he's, got, he's putting nothing into it. But yeah, no, I, I want, we need to do, uh, I, the pairing I'd like to do with that is They Live in RoboCop together. I think both of those movies complement each other's satire. Next time we do RoboCop, though, like, since it's a re, I think what we need to do on the re-reviews and the movies that deserve re-reviews are extremely deep dive, so like, when we do RoboCop, when we do Demo Man, we need to deep dive every piece of fucking trivia you can think about. We need to talk about the more political natures of things like RoboCop and Demo Man. Demo Man deserves a re a re a review because I believe it's. I mean, say what you want about Stallone. Demo Man's one of those movies that redefined action movies, or it it, it was much ahead of its time in its satire and writing. So like, I'd love I to think do re reviews only on because it. Wesley Snipes was in it. I think that's right, deep dives, deep dives on RoboCop. <laughs> Demo and Judge Dread. Judge, B. yeah, that's another good one. Then Equilibrium's a movie we've never reviewed, so you know we're yeah. gonna try to figure out how to fit him in. I don't think we're gonna be having Giovanni throughout Christmas, which is a bit of a bummer, but um, we'll figure out those movies uh, for for next month as well. And next week we'll have another pairing. Might be one of the pairings we just discussed. I don't know, but we'll figure that out. Everybody, we're done. Have a great night. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next week, and then after that we'll be taking a couple weeks off. And then we'll be right back at it. So everybody have a great night and uh, we'll see you next week. Love you.